In this training, I'm going to give you seven secrets to outsource everything. Why should you listen to me? My name is Michael Cheney. I'm the owner of growfast.biz, where we help internet business owners grow fast. I've done over $10 million online, and I'm on a mission to give away everything I've learned for free. The first secret is to get stuff off your desk as quickly as possible. How do you do this? Well, the first time you do a task, you should just do it and learn it. The second time you do a task, you should perfect it. The third time you do it, you should outsource it and document it. So basically you get into the habit of, okay, I'm doing something, is this any good? No, it's not very good, let me do it again. When you do it again, hopefully you get it down, you get the process right, and you also realize it's something you're gonna repeat in the future. So the third time you do it, it needs to set a trigger off in your mind where, oh, I've done this twice before, I know what I'm doing now, let me record this, let me set a video going, let me take notes and get a video and step-by-step -step text instructions of this process and get rid of it so I never have to do it again. And when you're giving that to an outsourcer, not only should you give them that instruction, you should also embed a secret instruction at the end that makes sure that they pay attention to detail, i.e. make sure you start your response to getting this work from me by using the word dear or whatever right so you're actually putting them under the spot and testing them to make sure they pay attention to detail the second secret is to hire on personality type and not talent I've made this mistake many, many times. It took me a long time to learn it. And that is don't just go for the best, so-called best person, or the person that's got the most talent or the most skill. You cannot teach and really learn personality and culture fit with your organization. But if you get somebody in who's the right personality type, they fit well with the team or you individually, if it's just your first hire, then you can teach them the skill and you can teach them the talent. But remember, you wanna be rewarding them for what they do. And if they're coming to you with very little talent, then you've got to factor that into what you're paying them when they first start. To make sure we're attracting the right type of people into our organization, I always make people do something for free at first just to show that they've got the available time and they really want it. If they then jump through those hoops and actually perform that task well, then they make it to the next grade, which is kind of an interview. And if they pass the interview, we might take them on on a trial basis. And after the trial, if they're still great and they don't hate me and I don't hate them, then nobody's a psycho. Then we can engage with each other properly. Step number three is is to realize that people will do more for praise and recognition than they will financial reward, within reason. Now, this doesn't mean you can abuse it and just say, hey, you're doing an awesome job, well done, and give people a pat on the back when you don't really mean it and they don't really deserve it and think that you can get away with paying people less. You need to pay people at least what they're worth, if not more, but also be mindful that just paying a salary or paying somebody for the job that they've done is not why they do the job. People want to be recognized, they want to be heard, they want to be listened to, and they want to know that they're making a difference. In my company, I'm always looking for opportunities to give people a pat on the back, give them a virtual high five across the organization, and we like to share wins with one another when somebody's done a great job so everybody can see the impact that they're having. Hey, real quick, if you want to grow your business fast, get over to growfast.biz. I've got a proven strategy to give you there completely for free that will accelerate you and break you through to the next level quickly. Get over to growfast.biz. Now, back to the show. The fourth secret is actually about managing the staff and managing the outsources that you have with a weekly staff huddle. Now, as the name suggests, this is a huddle where you, the manager or the leader or the overseer of the organization, get everybody together and talk about the vision for the week and the longer term vision of the organization. It's not a round robin where everybody chips in and discusses what they're doing and everything else. We'll tackle that in a minute. This is more the vision for the week. Has anybody got anything to add about this particular issue and what we're headed on? Otherwise, let's get to it. And secret number five is to do weekly one on ones with every team member. Now, as the organization grows, this becomes increasingly difficult. And what I found is I needed to get a manager and a production manager and an operations manager in place in order to help me do these one-on-ones so they could then find out what's happening on a one-on-one -on -one level with each of the members of the team and then feed it back to me. The one-on-ones are where you can find out how people are doing personally, if they're struggling with anything, if they're going in over their head, if they've got too much work or too little, and anything that they're hitting hurdles with in terms of the tasks that have been set. That leads us on to secret number six, communication. Very important to have open channels of communication. We have a CRM that gathers all the customer data into one place. We make sure we communicate regularly using Slack software. We also have Zoom sessions, as I've mentioned, and we also encourage interdepartmental sessions so people can find out what's happening in other areas of the business where there's overlap, such as marketing and sales, delivery, customer support and sales, and these kind of things, so that people all know what's going on in the company. And secret number seven is as your business grows, you need to tell people what to do rather than 
how to do it. When you first take on a hire, you're really micromanaging because maybe you don't even know the process that well yourself and you need to ensure that first person is doing a good job. But as you grow and you get more people in your organization that are doing things for you, it's better to let go of the reins and actually relinquish control and just let people do the job that they need to do in the way that they want to do and you focus on what they should be doing and tell them this, this is the outcome that I want. How you get there isn't that important. Launching and growing a business is pretty much like launching a rocket. The phase that you need to launch a rocket from the ground control all the way up into lower orbit is not the same phase of rocket that is needed to get out of orbit and into space, nor is it the same phase that is then needed to dock on a space station and then needed to come back down to Earth. You notice how a rocket starts like this, then it becomes something else, and it's got a second phase, a third phase, then it lets go of some other things, then it changes, and all these kind of things, right? This is the same as you in your business. Your role changes as your business grows. You start out doing everything, then you realize, okay, I'm doing this over and over, let me train people, then I can get other people to do this so then you become manager of the things rather than doer of the things although in reality you're doing and managing still then if you grow even further you then become a leader who is leading the managers who are then managing people who are doing the doing and if you grow even further you're then overseeing the leaders and you're not really involved you don't really have your fingers in the pies at all uh, you're literally just sitting back as all the money is made